What's behind the rise in the number of young people now identifying as LGBTQ+, as revealed in two recent surveys? There is no definitive answer to that question as of yet, but there are many conflicting opinions, and the surveys appear to be adding more heat to an already fiery debate. February 17, 2022, Gallup releases the results of its survey of 12,000 people asking Americans whether they personally identify as straight, heterosexual, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. March 31, 2022, the CDC releases the results of its Adolescent Behaviors and Experiences survey of just under 8,000 U.S. high school students. Both surveys revealing similar never-before-seen findings in the two youngest generations sampled, Millennials and Generation Z. Stunning and unprecedented growth in the percentage of people saying they identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual, questioning, or some other, with the CDC's survey now suggesting one in five U.S. high school students does not see themselves as heterosexual. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the report states we have uh, doubled the numbers since 2012, right? And and we do see a lot of generational Generation Z Americans uh, identify more to the LGBTQ plus community. And Jorge Reyes Salinas, communications director for Equality California, says he and many in the LGBTQ plus community believe increased general acceptance and a more welcoming public may be why. We know in the U.S. is I believe over 70 percent of both sides, a Democrat or Republican, uh, that accept and, ap and appreciate having the LGBTQ plus community and also especially people who have them in their families and are more understanding and empathetic and accepting. But also in growing numbers, more and more parents in many communities across the country are expressing a different opinion about what they think may be behind that increase. The concern is that uh, our children in the schools are being taught in regards to the transgenderism, the LGBTQ, uh, agenda, and uh, uh, that's one side of the story. That uh, that's a, a, an opinion, a culture, a belief that is uh, in, in our community, in our country. A belief pastor, Jesse Alvarez of Valley Life Community Church in Selma, says his church and others are now helping parents to address. So today we're hosting a crisis in our classroom conference. It is a, an event uh, geared towards educating pastors, churches, and families in the community about what is happening with the sexualization of our children in our classrooms. What's happening, Pastor Jim Doman of Church United in Newport Beach says, is the introduction of explicit sexual and LGBTQ-themed curricula and books to younger and younger kids in schools, and it's having an effect. It is your surroundings and what's being indoctrinated to children, because why this huge uptick? Well, the first time in history, California is promoting, endorsing almost in every area of academia. It's not academics. It's social agenda. And I said, Monty, of all the news interviews I've done, I've never heard any media outlet focus on this exponential increase of LGBTQ kids in the public schools. Gen Z, I mean, off the charts. Doman also says he has a unique insight into the controversy. Um, I'm a former homosexual. I came out of the gay lifestyle 20 years ago. Happily married to my wife, Amanda. We have three kids, um, eight, six, and four. And God delivered me through Jesus Christ. You know, if you want to be gay, choose to be gay. You want to be trans, that's your choice. But let adults make their sexuality decisions. Don't prey on innocent children. But now those children and their parents are picking up support from some unexpected new allies. Every teacher that has a pride flag in their classroom should be fired and arrested. Frank Rodriguez is executive director for Gays Against Groomers. I'm a 31-year-old gay man pushing back against the agenda that's happening within our classrooms. Rodriguez says that fight is now his organization's primary mission. The purpose of Gays Against Groomers is to end the sexualization, indoctrination, and medicalization of children through the LGBT umbrella. Rodriguez says the seven-month-old organization is growing fast with 20 chapters worldwide and new applications every day. How many in the LGBTQ community feel the way you do about this? Based on my experience and my involvement in this community and how much I've spoken with you know, people across this country, I would probably say it would be a healthy guess that at least 60 to 70 percent of, of our community does not support this. Its critics call the group and its leaders far-right, extremist, and even anti-LGBTQ. 
You know, I would say, number one, that's ridiculous because our whole group, Gays Against Groomers, is composed of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. Um, so we're not going to hate ourselves. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, secondly, it's it's really concerning to me that people consider being anti-child grooming and anti-pedophilia extremist. I thought that, you know, that was common sense. Common sense that former U.S. Marine and bisexual Samantha Viscount says many no longer seem to recognize. Everyone's like, no, 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 that's not indoctrination. You know, children, we're just teaching inclusion, so it, it doesn't count. And I totally disagree with that. I think that if you, you know, teach children that all this uh, LGBT material way too early on of an age before they understand it, it's absolutely indoctrination. Equality California's Jorge Reyes Salinas disagrees. No, I don't think that's uh, that should be a concern at all or even an issue to bring up because it sounds ignorant. Uh, we all read books about animals. We all read books about things that, you know, maybe are fantasy or whatever. And we're not saying that we're going to be those and uh, like that character of that book or or anything like that. But Viscount says grooming is something she recognizes all too well. Yeah. And that child was me. You know, I survived grooming when I was, uh, you know, a little girl. And my turning point against the uh, majority of the LGBT was when I started to notice the same exact stages of grooming happening under the guise of LGBT right in front of me. Gays Against Groomers chapter director Mario Present says the fight is personal for him. So I come from a large Hispanic family. Um, we have lots of nieces and nephews, so I want to see my nieces and nephews protected. But he says it's come at a cost for him and his husband of 20 years, and just about everyone in the organization. Harassment, doxing, attacks. Um, and then there's a numerous amount of death threats that we get all the time from the public, um, you know, w wishing a lot of horrible things on us. Still, all three agree the fight to protect young kids from inappropriate sexualized content in schools is one they are not willing to quit. We don't think children should be sexual at all. You know, the, the children have a very, very special innocence and we should be protecting it at all times. We shouldn't be sexualizing children or want them to be sexual. LGBT topics is not a place for schools, especially at the elementary school level. So no one should be doing that, just plain and simple. Pedophile is not a sexual orientation. There's no P in LGBTQ. We need to draw a very hard line with this. Now the straight community is the community that needs allies to speak for them because they have things that they got to say and we have an obligation to speak for them now. I am not oppressed. I am not silenced. I am a gay man. Frank, Samantha, and Mario say their message is not specifically for the LGBTQ community, but for anyone involved in putting explicit sexual content, hetero or LGBTQ, in front of young children in public schools and elsewhere. Equality California's Jorge Reyes Salinas says data shows when there's no LGBTQ affirming curriculum and representation in schools, you see increases in mental health concerns, suicidal thoughts, and truancy among LGBTQ youth. Bianca Wilson is senior scholar of public policy for the Williams Institute, which is a leading research center on sexual orientation and gender identity law and public policy in the U.S., says that no research has been conducted yet into what is causing the new growth in LGBTQ plus identifying youth and millennials and Generation Z. Follow the biggest education stories from KMPH Fox 26 and across the country at crisisintheclassroom.org.